Huh? 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 What? Damn. What's up, D Buzz? What's up, D Bows? What's up, you guys? What's up, trolls? What's up, YouTube world? What's up, YouTube fam? What's up, everybody? What's up? So it's Wednesday and it's real talk diva time. Real talk time. Okay. Let me tell y'all. It's hot outside. I think like it's supposed to be like the first week of fall. Am I correct? Or is that all I know is Dunkin Donuts says something about some fall flavors and you get a free cup, a cup of co iced coffee. And I'm like, OK, so is it fall yet? So this is what I'm this is what I'm trying to figure out. Is it fall yet? Because living out here in Arizona, girl, you don't never know when it's fall, when it's summer. OK, you know when it's like kind of like winter, but you don't really know when it's fall because fall out here is the same damn hot okay same damn hotness but anyway i hope you guys are all having like a really great day you know what i'm saying evening afternoon weekend whenever you watching this real talk video thanks for joining me and the fam but anyway i hope you guys are having like a really great day like i said whenever you watching this um yeah first of all um you know what? I'm going to just get right to the punch of things. I'm going to just get right to it because there's really no need to just beat around the bush. So y'all remember last, last, last Wednesday, real talk, when we had two, we had two emails. Now, remember I said, I don't know if the first one that I'm going to be reading is for real talk because it didn't state that. It just, in the subject line, it was addressed muffins, okay? And it was from someone named Concerned Diva. Basically, she was telling me, you know, that I lack skills in the dating scene. Um, I'm stuck on my ex. Um, she trying to open my eyes up for stuff. It just was a bunch of bullshit, okay? But I didn't know if it was for Real Talk or not, but I read it. Uh, girl, why? Please tell me why, why? Did she send me another email? And this one definitely... Like, I don't even give two fucks if it was for real talk or not, because I'm pretty sure she know that I'm going to read it. But I guess the first one wasn't for real talk, but you never said it was or it wasn't. It doesn't even matter. I can do what the fuck I want to do. I'm grown. And this is my YouTube channel. OK, so if I want to give out your goddamn email address, I could do that, too. But that wouldn't be right of me. I wouldn't do that. But she sent me a very short email. To let me know that it wasn't for real talk. Okay, real quick. Because, like, I don't really be wanting to read people because I'm not about to read you. But what I'm about to say to you, I hope you will understand. But here is the email. Dear Muffins. Hello, once again. This is Concerned Diva. For one, I want to state to you that the email that I sent to you last week was not for real talk. I did state in the email that I wanted to open up your eyes, not your viewers eyes. However, for one, I do understand how your subscribers may feel about me as I read some of the comments. You guys really don't know me personally. However, I was just trying to open up April's muffins eyes to a new world but if you want to continue to stay stuck then by all means do so there's a lot of fish out there in the sea ocean river lake wherever you want to find them and you'll just be missing out on a good thing peace and blessings to you all It wasn't for real talk. That's cool. But here's the thing, sweetheart. I don't, this is what y'all fail to realize. Like, I'm not all of y'all. I'm going to just say this again. Like, I don't really give two fucks what anybody think about me. If you want to keep my eyes open, keep my eyes shut, or fish in the ocean, sea, pool, wherever. I'm pretty sure there are lots of them. There, There's, you know what? There's a whole lot of them out there. No one ever said that we wanted to pull each one of them out the motherfucker, okay? But concerned diva, you don't really seem like a concerned diva to me. You don't even seem like a diva, okay? What you seem like is a whining tantrum 
young or older, older, desperate lady, desperado, desperately seeking, okay, dick, okay, desperately seeking DSD, desperately seeking dick, okay, that's what you seem like, I should be the one concerned about you, diva, okay, however, I really don't care, I really don't care how you feel, and I'm... The next email that you give to me or email me or whatever, send me. I'm definitely not going to waste my time addressing it to you anymore. Because some of you women, and, and I say some because I don't meet everybody. But some of you women just fail to realize that this world revolves around more than just being in a relationship. There are things in this world that are more important to other people than just a relationship okay and I, I appreciate everybody on here that look out for me want to see my best interest want to be my friend want to make sure that I'm good I appreciate that because you know what I'm saying that means that y'all care but then there are some people that are so ignorant and naive that they'll just take whatever okay and it's a shame that you can't even learn to love yourself before you can allow somebody else to but, you know what I'm saying? Stuck, I will stay stuck like a motherfucking rat on a sticky trap, okay? I will do that, Concern Diva, and you as well have a blessed day, okay? Now, I would have said the F-bomb after the word blessed, but you know what? I'm not about to put anything godly and mix it in with the negative meaning, a negative word, so, because you're definitely not worth my time. Or I'm pretty sure my subscribers time because what you wrote was ridiculous and let's just be honest it was fucking ridiculous and it's it's still ridiculous like you know what I'm saying the dating scene I, I could care less about a dating scene I'm not desperate not desperately seeking and damn sure don't give a damn about how concerned or non-concerned desperately diva thinks of me okay DSD desperately seeking dick okay now I'm gonna leave it at that okay yes that's what I think about that email okay everybody seriously let's let's move on now and stop fucking emailing me bullshit because I'm not gonna read the next one I just don't have the time nor the energy but then again I do have so much energy y'all I went for long walks for three days in a row three days in a row while wearing these goddamn orthopedic compression socks on both legs. They are on both my legs now for my vein disease. And at first, but when I first got them, like, um, I just really did not want to wear them out in public because I just, before I even got them, I just was like, oh, people are going to look at me all strange. It's hot. And, and I'm going to have on shorts or, or whatever. You're going to see my, my compression socks. Cause they go up to my knee, like right underneath my knee. And of course, you know, they look like thick opaque tights, th socks, but I had the feet out, the feet are out, the, the toes are cut out of them. Um, that's how, I, those are the ones that I wanted. But anyway, so listen, I guess after a while, you don't give a shit what people think about you, if they looking at you, if they admiring your outfit, or if they making fun of the shit, because it's either I'm going to feel better or not. So I really can't say like... Is it making me? F I do notice. Well, okay, so I noticed the difference. Like at the end of the night, it don't even have to be at the end of the night. It'd be like six o'clock. The whole like bottom calf part to my foot be all swollen and stuff from the pressure from my veins. So being that I have to wear these socks for two months straight, that alleviates that. So it is a good feeling because my feet be so sore when they swollen, they sore. So. I don't really give two fucks about people looking at my goddamn stockings, my compression socks. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. Shit. Look at them. They, they not attractive, but shit. I got them on each foot. All right? Each leg. But hey, it is what it is. At least I'm going to feel better, right? Hmm. Okay, I'm not going to hold y'all for too long because I have two of them, okay? The first one is going to be really short and simple. If you want to real talk about yourself, you can always send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com or aprilsrealtalk at gmail.com. And I'll post the information down below. But on that note, let's just jump into this real talk, okay? Huh? 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 <laughs> What? Yeah. 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 All right, you guys. <clears throat> so like I was saying, I have two of them. 
This first one is going to be a really quick and simple answer to your question, my, my diva girl, okay? Hey, April, you mentioned a little something about an issue that I am a little familiar with in your Real Talk segment. So I thought I'd send this to you. I know someone who has a man who claims a child as his godson, who may not be his godson. She is an acquaintance of mine and my other friends. We have all ran in the same circle for many years and we still bump into each other from time to time. We have always suspected this child was this man's real son simply because he looks just like him and he acts more like a father figure to him than a godfather. My friend has met this other lady, his friend, and so have we, and trust me, it's more than there that meets the eye. The way they act towards each other gives off a vibe that there are more they are more than friends. I and my other friends think deep down his girlfriend knows that this is his biological son. We have hinted around many times and some of us, me, have flat out told her what we thought. She doesn't exactly admit this, but we think she goes along with it because she doesn't want to be by herself or they have been together for 10 years or more. He treats her well, has a good job, and takes care of everything. But he sometimes goes on long trips two weeks at a time without her at, without her at least two to three times a year. Of course, he tells her it's business. I suspect he cheated before with this other woman on one of those business trips. So this other woman is the woman with the godson. Okay. I suspect he cheated on her before with this other woman. Maybe it was a one night stand back then and resulted in pregnancy, which is supposed to be his godson. I've known this lady from high school, his real girlfriend. We were friends then, but not close friends. We are still friends somewhat to this day. Okay, so we're still friends somewhat to this day. Now, when she comes around our circle, she doesn't seem happy. And when we ask her, how's Jim, his fake name, is doing, she looks sad and says, we're doing okay. He's out of town on a business trip again. We can tell she's not happy. Should we pry further to see if she found out that it's his real son or just leave it alone? In the beginning, we used to tease her, but stopped it a long time ago. She seems really down. I just want her to know we're no longer judging her and we are there for her. What do you think? Okay, so basically, when I first read this, I got a little confused, okay? But basically, it's this. Okay, so we got... We're going to say, we're going to call this girl who wrote me the letter because she didn't give herself a name. Cassidy. We're going to just, right? We're going to call her, we're going to call her Flo. Okay, we're going to call her Flo. So Flo wrote me a letter about one of her friends that she knew from high school. They wasn't close friends. They wasn't the best of friends. They weren't besties. But they knew each other. They were friends. Okay. So Flo run in the same circle as we're going to call this girl Jill. Same circle as Jill. Now Jill been going out with Jack for like 10 plus years. Okay. And she be seeming kind of sad now. Jill been seeming kind of sad. This is what, um, what the fuck is the girl's name that wrote me again? Oh my God. I forgot just that quick. Flo. Um, so Jill's been acting kind of sad when she gets around Flo and them, okay? And so Flo and the rest of the crew is like, oh, how's you and Jim doing? You know what I'm saying? His name is Jim. Jim doing blah, blah, blah. And so Jill be like, oh, I'm kind of sad. You know, she said, she said, basically Flo is wondering, should she tell, should her and her other friends pry any further in Jill's business and ask her did she find out or not if that was really her man's godchild or his real child okay so basically Jim is in an entanglement okay and the girl who wrote me Flo she knows Jim she knows Jill and she knows of the other lady that has a baby which is saying saying that it's his godson so we got this is so so fucking confusing it's it's so fucking confusing. It's it's confusing for me to even explain the shit, okay? Me personally, okay, the story is so entangled. I'm motherfucking entangled, okay? I'm entangled. Um, whew. 
We'll so after that one. Um, I don't even like the names that I chose. So yeah, the names really suck. Flo want to know, should she and her other friends pry into Jill's business by trying to find out if Jill has found out about the little godson child or should she just leave it alone? Um, I really think like this, Flo, the nosy email girl who wrote me, you should mind your motherfucking business, okay? That part ain't confusing, and this is not an entanglement or tangle. But why are you so worried about Jill's relationship with Jim and who Jim got a baby with? That's not your business, and you're not even her friend like that. You've even said it. You she she runs in the same circle as you. You're not her best friend. Y'all knew each other from school. Y'all are friends, but y'all ain't close like that. You're just trying to be fucking nosy, okay? Why are you so worried about Jim and this little and somebody else's kid? Like on some real shit, this be the problem with the world. Everybody needs to learn how to mind a fucking business at times. Like that email was all over the fucking place. You know what I'm saying? Like I got so confused at the whole fucking email until I had to really, as I'm reading, I had to really concentrate on the shit. That's why I was pausing and shit. You know what I'm saying? So it got real confusing. The email got really confusing, but it all boils down to you flow. Cause you didn't even give yourself a name, but I'm gonna name you flow. Cause you mighty fast at being in somebody's business. Okay. So I'm gonna name you flow. It all boils down to the emailer, Flo, worried about somebody else's business, okay? You worried about if that baby is his or not. You worried about if this man has a baby with somebody that you know, that you know of. That You know what I'm saying? If he had a baby on, you know what I'm saying? Like, you so worried about somebody else's affairs. You worried about somebody who don't even fuck with you like that. You don't even fuck with Jill like that. You know what I'm saying? You said it yourself. She just run in a circle that I run in. We're not close like that, but I know her. We're friends. You're not friends. You're motherfucking associates because a friend is somebody who's down for you and is there for you. That's what a motherfucking friend is. Somebody who got your back. Not some nosy ass motherfucker who wants to exploit you and want to find out if you know that your man is cheating on you. And if he is cheating, that might not be his godchild. That might be his real biological son not his godson you worried about telling somebody that that don't even fuck with you like that and you don't even fuck with like that like that ain't even your home girl like that this is the problem with nosy ass females y'all worry about too much shit that ain't got nothing to do with you if you don't fuck with the lady like that if you're not in her circle you just running in the same circle with her like that but y'all don't y'all ain't calling each other up like girl come over let's fry some chicken up or girl come over let's play some cards if you ain't doing none of those things but you see you you see her when you see her you shout out to her when you see her you're like you're not going bending over backwards for her then why the fuck are you so worried about who the fuck her man is fucking it ain't your motherfucking business okay it's not your business if it ain't you don't fucking worry about it. That's not your friend like that. Like you said, that's not your friend like that. So why are you so worried about fucking up somebody else's happy home? That girl have problems just like everybody else. You just want to be nosy and be in her business talking about, oh, well, Jill come around looking down. Maybe she just don't come. Maybe she come around looking down because your ass is there and she know how motherfucking nosy you are. Maybe when you see Jill, she's before you see Jill, maybe she's happy go lucky, you know, conversing with everybody. But then as soon as you come into the part, that's when she seemed down because maybe she don't like you because she know you messy. You stuff. You just fucking messy. You messy. Mm. I hope y'all y'all get the y'all got the email because at first I was so fucking confused. I, I I say I swear to you guys I was so fucking confused. Like goddamn, you're gonna write me something. Please don't confuse me like that. But it all boils down to just being nosy and worrying about somebody else's business. Like yeah, these are some of these emails are people being in other people's business. But at least they're saying, well, you know what? That's my bestie. That's my sister. They're not saying to me, well. You know, we're not close friends. We're we're friends, but you know, they're not saying it in in regards to the person like that. They're they're saying it as in regards to they care about the person or how the person, you know, what the person is to them. Flo is just messy. She's being messy right now. Like that's being nosy, girl. 
You should just leave it and mind your business. That's what you should do. Okay. Stop being nosy. That's why there be so much unwanted unne- and unneeded beef on social media and real and in person. Like because people don't they never learn how to um mind their business. Hold on, guys. So yeah, that that's that be the problem. Like people let me tell you something. If I knew you, like, we was cool, but we wasn't cool, like, you know what I'm saying, like she said, we wasn't really cool, we just was friends from school, like, I wasn't close with you, and I just only see you when you come around in, in a circle or whatever, hanging out with other friends, I'm not gonna really, like, involve myself too much in your personal affairs, like, I'm gonna just mind my business, because people get fucked up over shit like that, that be the problem with everybody, learning how to mind your business, that's the key to success. Learning how to mind your motherfucking business. And when I say that's the key to success, because some people be hating so much on other people's success that they can't even be successful for them damn selves. And what I mean that is you be quick to say, oh, I don't like that bitch. Look at her. Look at that bitch. Look at that bitch. Look at what she got on. That's hating on somebody's success. It doesn't matter what the fuck it is. You know what I'm saying? You just, yes. Just scroll. Leave it alone. Mind your, mind your motherfucking business. Mind your neck. Okay. That's what you should do. Now, moving on, okay, to the next freaking email, all right? Because I told y'all that was quick. That was quick. Now, this one is long. Sorry, not sorry. She titled it, sorry, not sorry, okay? Hello, Miss April. You can call me Francis for for this email. And my ex-bestie, Diana. And my so-called ex-man, Travis. Okay, so we call in her ex-bestie, Diana, her ex-man, Travis, and her name is Frances. Thank you in advance as well for reading this email on YouTube. You are welcome, girlfriend. So my name is Frances, and I thought I was in a committed relationship slash loyal friendship for all these dang years. I met my ex-boyfriend back in college, my last year of college, actually, which was t- which was over 10 years ago. And my ex-bestie, we were friends since sophomore year in high school. Diana actually lived on my block. She moved there her freshman year, and we became friends the following year and have been inseparable from one another ever since. So here goes. Being that we have been friends for so long, of course she knows Travis, and Travis knows her husband. Um, we can call him Glenn. Glenn and Travis are cool with one another, meaning boys night out, hang out, you know, that kind of stuff, which is great. So, of course, we'd be double dating and having fun with one another. My birthday was coming up and I had no idea that Travis and Diana planned a huge get together surprise for me, surprise party for me for my birthday with some of our other close friends. The party was great. I was shocked that they put this together without me knowing anything. April, Travis, and Diana did such a wonderful job on everything. I finally found out through my sister that Travis and Diana had met with one another behind my back several times to plan the big bash. They went to lunch, met up at the bar. They were hanging tight. My sister told me that's how they planned the birthday bash. I found this out, of course, after the party because I was curious how it all happened so smooth and I was actually talking to my sister about it. My sis was like, oh girl, I thought they told you they was hanging out with one another to plan this. I didn't think anything of it because why would I? It was all for me. Well, fast forward a few months ago and I'm seeing like weird changes in our group dating. Travis nor Diana want to go do things as a couple anymore. They both keep coming up with excuses like they don't want to be around the couple scene. And honestly, I thought it was a little bit weird, but not really. I guess they just wanted to have private time. I get a text from one of my friends who I'm cool with. She's telling me how she saw Travis and Diana together at the bar. I, of course, thought nothing of it. Honestly thought this was from months prior while planning my birthday party. And my friend was just now getting around to telling me she saw them at the bar. I really didn't think much of it until one day Travis said he had a dinner meeting with a few co-workers. So being that he was going to be out late, I thought I would invite Diana over to eat dinner with me. She was busy as well. Of course, I thought nothing of it. Well, a few days later, Miss April, I go to do the laundry. And I notice in Travis's pants, 
there was a receipt to a very exclusive restaurant and the bill was about $189. I didn't think much of it until I seen it was for a party. It was only for a party of two. I asked Travis about this and he said that it was for his colleagues at work and the reason why it says party of two is because the bill was split in half but there was a gang of them there so of course I didn't think much of that as well. Well now let's fast forward to about a week and a half later and I was speaking to Diana about just hanging out and having good times as couples and she told me she would like she would have liked to have gone to that same restaurant that was mentioned earlier in the receipt that I found in my boyfriend's pants. I asked Diana has she ever been to that particular restaurant and she did state that she had been a few weeks back with her and Glenn. I found it really strange because a few weeks back or maybe a week and a half is when I found that actual receipt. But I didn't really say much about it. I just thought maybe that was a coincidence. Well, let's just really fast forward, Miss April, because I don't want this to be too long. Diana did state that she was at the restaurant with Glenn. Travis stated that he was at the restaurant with his co-workers. I was just really confused as to who was where. I started looking through Travis's phone and noticed all kinds of strange text messages with no name to them, just a strange phone number. In these text messages, they said things as such as, when are we going to see each other again? I'm really tired of doing this behind their backs. I just started putting two and two together, but still said nothing. I started to speak to my sister about my findings and what I thought to be going on. My sister didn't believe it. She thought that I was just bugging out and maybe Travis was cheating, but definitely not with my bestie, Diana. Long story short, Miss April, because it hurts to even write this, I came home from work hours and hours early, basically two hours after I left to go to work. This was um, on Travis's vacation day. And I'm normally supposed to be at work from 8 to 4.30. Well, I came home exactly at 10 o'clock that same morning from work and saw Diana's car parked in front of my house. I didn't remember Diana telling me that she was going to come over or Travis mentioning Diana coming over. So I crept in my house quietly and lo and behold, this bitch Diana was butt naked on her knees at the foot of my bed sucking my man off. The first thing I did was start screaming what the fuck is going on and grabbing her by her hair, of course. It became a scuffle, a fight. Travis tried to break it up. She wasn't really trying to fight me back as she knew she was dead wrong, but I could not believe what I saw. I haven't spoken to her since. I haven't even spoken to Travis since. They've both been trying to text me and apologize, and I honestly don't have words for either one of them. I'm not really sure if Diana's husband, Glenn, is aware of the situation, but I do understand now the reason why they didn't want to hang out as a couple because they was fucking each other behind me and Glenn's back. What do you think I should do? I don't really care about texting back either one of them. That what's done is done. I thought she was my friend and she might have been and I thought she was my man and he might have been. But I guess not anymore. I don't really even care to get an apology because how do you say sorry to anyone for that? Honestly, Miss April, if I see Di if I see Diana in public, I'll probably try to go upside her head again. And as far as Travis is concerned, well, I got uncles and I got a daddy and cousins to take care of his ass if need be. What do you think I should do? I am so hurt behind all of this and really thought that having a best friend would mean a friend for life, especially since we've known each other for so long. And I really never saw the signs of Travis acting like somebody's dirty dog, but damn to be in my home butt naked and find that is totally grounds for a non-friendship. What do you think? The reason why I said you can call her Diana is strictly because of the song Dirty Diana from Michael Jackson. I always loved that song and now I'm just going to use it to reference her because that's all she is, is a dirty hoe and so is Travis. Damn. Okay, so that's fucked up, Francis. Um, that 
Let me take a swig of water. That right there made me need a drink, and I haven't had a drink in weeks, okay? But God damn, God damn, could you imagine coming home and seeing your best friend butt naked at the foot of your bed sucking your man's dick? Like, could you imagine seeing that shit? It don't even gotta be your best friend. It could be anybody doing some shit like that. And you walk in on that. What would you do? Like, what would I do? I mean, like, you already beat the bitch up. Let me, listen, Francis, just do me this favor. Don't, if you see her out in public, don't even waste your time or your energy because you know what? Some people, like, even though, like, I mean, I would probably still want to beat her up every chance I get. Like, I'd be lying if I said I, I wouldn't. I would really be lying if I said I wouldn't. You know, because it's not one of those situations where it's like, oh, what a girl didn't know. The girl didn't know he had a girl. It, de it definitely isn't one of those. So, like, an ass whooping is definitely what the fuck you get. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that shit, like, I feel like I want to go find Dirty Diana and let her fucking let, it ha let her have it. Like, on some real shit, who does that? Real cheap, y'all both cheap as, mo as cheap motherfuckers. Like when I say y'all both, meaning Diana and Travis, y'all some cheap motherfuckers. Cause first of all, y'all want to cheat, cheat, but y'all want to be cheap and can't even go get a hotel room. Like you gonna really do it in your own house and you gonna come to your best friend's house and fuck her man in there. Like you got to be out your fucking mind. Like that's some real bullshit right there. What would I do, girl? You already did what I would do. I would go upside her motherfucking head. But don't take it too far. Like you know what I'm saying. Like, don't beat her up every time you see her. Like I'm not trying to promote violence because it don't matter if I tell Francis to not beat her up. I guarantee you she's gonna see her and wanna go upside her head. Who wouldn't? Who would not want to go upside the bitch head if that was you? If yeah, if you was in that situation, y'all would want to go upside the bitch head too. So let's just be for real with this one. What would I do? As far as Travis, you know what? Don't you know what? Like what did what what the concerned diva said? There's so many of them in the oceans, the lakes, the um the rivers, wherever the supermarket, the the, the they all over the place. You know what I'm saying? This, just throw his ass back to the ocean and learn to love yourself, okay? That's what you need to do. Throw his ass back to the fucking ocean. You can tell you can tell that bitch to go drown too, okay? You can tell what's her name again? Um, what the bitch name again is? A uh, Diana, dirty Diana. Look at me, okay? You can tell that bitch to go ahead and, and drown too. Like, god damn, dirty Diana, go drown, all right? Go drown, dirty Diana, go drown. Diana got a husband named Glenn. Francis don't know if Glenn know. This is not a situation where you want to tell the person to mind their business because that is her bestie's husband, okay? They have a friendship. They've been out together. They all hang out with one another. So if he don't know, this is me, then he need to. That would be really fucked up if Diana took her dirty, dr dirty, nasty, stinking ass home to Glenn and never said anything about it. Just like carried on like nothing ever happened. That's fucked up because Travis and Glenn had boys night. They hang out too. There's a lot of people that need to get fucked up in this situation. Not even a lot too. Like too. But each one of them just th damn. I don't even know what to say to this. I'm speechless because I couldn't imagine walking in on something like that yo i think she did what i think a whole lot of us would do a whole lot of us because yeah if you you cheat on me is one thing me to catch you getting your that's that's like y'all gonna cheat and be cheap y'all motherfuckers that's some bullshit like that's really some bullshit what did i just say friends friends is never gonna that's not a friend like your friend was your friend but she just got besides herself like she really violated the friendship you know how they have these girl codes and shit that was like dang she like blew all the girl codes like she just like she ran over them motherfuckers with a lawnmower like man let me beat her up for you okay like some real shit if you didn't speak to Glenn, I think you should because he is your friend too and you owe him that much. It's not like you are breaking up a happy home or a happy family or a happy marriage because obviously your so-called ex-bestie, she wasn't too happy anyway because if she was, she would never stepped out and tried to fuck with your man, okay? Not tried to, she did. If that's what you were um, referring to, what should you do because Glenn doesn't know, you don't know if he knows or not, 
then I would definitely call him up and have a good talk with him. Maybe you and him should go meet each other for lunch and shit and plan something. Plan a good old ass whooping. No, let me not say that. But I'm not saying go get with Glenn. But what I am saying is you should you should talk to Glenn. You should definitely give him a call and inform him. You don't you don't owe your friends. Okay, you don't owe that bitch, Diana, nothing. You don't owe her no excuse of why you call Glenn up. You don't owe her no reason, no story as to why you called her husband up and told him what went down. You don't owe her that. What the fuck? Why would you owe her that? Like, let's be for real. Why would you owe her that? She seemed like she owed you the way she carried on. And you, you the only thing you owe her, honey, ooh, is, a, is, a, is another ass whooping. But like I said, I don't promote violence. So, girl, listen, I'm going to just say this, okay? This one I'm going to say, don't get yourself in trouble. Don't get yourself in no bullshit ass trouble over nobody that ain't worth getting in trouble over. Straight up. That they fucked you over. They both really did some dirty, grimy shit. And you know something? Life be all about learning. and be about some lessons and some learning type shit. You know what I'm saying? And as bad as sometimes we want to go around and fuck somebody up. We can't always do that shit because if we go around fucking people up, we're going to end up somewhere where we don't want to be, okay? And that is behind bars. And I don't know about y'all, but I don't want to go to jail. I've already been there. I don't want to go to jail. I don't want to chill behind bars, especially not over some worthless ass bitch and dude. Like, And I say they worthless because if they was really your friends and if they was really your your boyfriend in a committed relationship with you and they really cared about you as a person, then this would have never been transpired. You would have never been writing me this email and I wouldn't have been having this discussion with you right now. So being that to me, it seemed like they didn't care about nobody but themselves. You don't owe nobody no reasons as to why you told Glenn that his woman was on her knees at the foot of your bed, butt naked, giving out BJs. Okay. Either way, you don't owe nobody no explanation as to why you told Jim. Because I don't recall neither one of those bitches giving you an explanation as to why she was sucking his dick and why he invited her over to suck his dick in y'all place. Okay point blank period people be on some real bullshit these days at the way they do others you know you think that somebody be your friend and you want to say that because y'all been true chummy chum chum since since school so why wouldn't you think that y'all been friends why wouldn't y'all think that that's not your girl you know what I'm saying? why would you think that she would do anything so trifling and deceitful behind your back you know what i'm saying but it's, it's, it's fucked up how the world is. And some people are so selfish and so greedy that they don't care about nobody but them own selves. And that sucks. That's that's fucked up and that sucks. And it, and it probably is something really hurtful too. When you, you know what I'm saying? When you think about it like that. Like people, some people don't really give a fuck about others. You know what I'm saying? They don't even care about themselves. So why would they care about others? You know what I'm saying? Like straight up. But like on some real shit, like if that was my friend, man, she got an ass open. And I mean, I get it. I do get it and truly understand. You do want to go upside her head again when you see her in public. Why wouldn't you? That is the only human thing to do. But sweetheart, I wouldn't keep dwelling on that shit. Move past it. And, and, I, and when I say move past it, trust me when I say it, I say it with sincerity i say it like with sympathy empathy because i know that has to be a hurtful thing i ain't never been through that thank god because i'll be in jail if i happen but i know it's got to be very hurtful to have to witness that from two people that you really do care for that's that's where it's fucked up but don't let the devil take control of your emotions please don't you know what I'm saying? As hard as it may be, don't let the devil take control of your emotions, girl. Some people definitely ain't worthy of spending time in jail. Not at all. Mm -mm. Y'all let Francis know what y'all would do. Okay? And y'all, listen, I'm going to eat. My stomach is growling. I'm hungry. I'm going to have me a salad, okay? A salad. We could be have a salad. You know, I'm on that weight loss journey kick. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I love you all. Stay diva and divolicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe. Thumbs the video up. And I'll see y'all in the next Real Talk.